there, chaps. Wolf Gore here, and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. We are continuing where we left off at the end of the last episode. Episode 4, we just got crayons with Sayori and had a very special moment where she bumped her head. It was kind of our fault. We got her some apple juice. She pressed it for her, to, her, 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 to her forehead gently, and uh, it, was, it was precious. You gotta watch episode 4 to get it. So, we are going to jump into where we left off. We are still looking for supplies to make the posters for the festival coming up. Sayori hops to her feet. Aha! Er, ah! She clutches her forehead again. Oh no, she's got a concussion. Don't stand up so fast after hurting yourself. Uh, well, I guess it's too late now. Anyway, let's go. I follow Sayori out of the classroom. Sayori plays with her bangs to try and hide the bump, but without much success. In a moment, we make it back to the club room. Ah, you're back! Good timing. I was just about ready to start with sharing our poems. Eh, Sayori, your forehead. She's fine. Don't worry about. I was playing with the crayons and smacked my forehead into the shelf. Da da da. Da da da. Well, anyway, <laughs> were you able to find everything we needed? Uh, I have it right. Eh? Sayori frantically glances around herself. I forgot all of the stuff. Calm down, Sayori. I have it all right here. I found the poster paper, too. <laughs> Sounds like you ended up doing all the work, Wolfgore. Ah, well, Sayori. I failed to come up with an excuse for Sayori. I made it an adventure. She's so fucking cute. Yeah, that. <laughs> okay, okay. In any case, good work. It'll. I'll start working on the poster tonight. Me too. Okay, everyone. Are you ready to share your poems? Guess I should grab mine. After making sure the crayon box is closed tightly, I return to my seat. Okay, who should I share my poem to first? I definitely read that correctly. Come at me, bro. Uh, we're gonna go with Sayori because Sayori is fucking bae. And uh, she comes first. Sayori! Wolfgore! I really love your poems. I can't believe you've been hiding these from me. Eh? I'm not hiding anything. But your poems are so good! Yesterday's and this one too. You can't tell me you haven't done this before. I mean, you're really the only one who feels that way, so... Eh? No way! Not even Natsuki? Well, I guess Natsuki is the least likely to admit how much she likes something. But I don't think it's that. What do you mean? Well, I guess I'll be honest about it. It's a lot easier to write poems when I'm thinking about you. Smooth, smooth. <laughs> what, what, what? Stop thinking weird things, idiot. <laughs> I just mean that you're a really expressive person. And then I call her an idiot. Man, not smooth. Not smooth. Or maybe it is. I don't know. I don't know. Negging? Is that negging? I guess. How am I supposed to write poems about my own stupid life? But you somehow make everything in your life an adventure. Even the little things. Like cooking. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> so, yeah. I guess what I'm saying is that I can feel more feelings through you than I can through myself. We have that kind of weird connection. It's your fault for getting in my business all the time. <laughs> I don't know if I understand. Sigh. You never understand when I try to explain things to you, do you, Sayori? I pat Sayori's forehead. <laughs> hey! I'm not a kid, you know. Are you sure about that? Mm, maybe. Sayori starts fiddling with her pencil between her hands. Hey, Wolfgore, will you give me your poem? I kinda want to keep it. Uh, why? Because, well, it's the first time you've written something for me. <laughs> Sayori, you're completely misunderstanding. I didn't read that right, but you got it. I don't... I didn't write this for you. <laughs> Sigh. Are you even listening anymore? Well, whatever. I'll give it to you when we get... when we go home. Really? Snap. Ah! I broke my pencil. Sayori hastily bends down to pick up the piece she dropped. But being in the... in it... 
But being inattentive of her surroundings, she bumps right into me. S sorry It's fine, it's fine. I'll get it for you. I bend down and pick up the broken pencil. Sayori clutches the desk beside her to s support herself, knees shaking. I'm a little clumsy today. <laughs> Let's sit down, Sayori. Y yeah. I grab Sayori's arm and help her sit at the desk. Anyway, I still haven't read your poem. Oh, sorry, I forgot about that. But it's not as good as yours. Jeez, don't worry. I'm sure I'll like it. Bottles! I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine, all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe, and I put the bottle on the shelf with all of the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in a bottle all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle, a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friends, my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper, my fingers go, like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty self should use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally all done, I open up and in come my friends. In they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend. Each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Ah! Well, that was a poem. I mean, l lyrically, I, I enjoyed it. It, it. It's a little dark for Sayori, though. But maybe she's revealing her true character to us, to us through poetry. Okay. Um, holy crap. <laughs> yep, that's about how I feel. Sayori, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah! Writing is the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. Sayori's always had a bit of a... Ha a b b b uh. Sayori's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this, one, this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Who should I show my poem to next? Uh, let's go with Natsuki. Natsuki, the little fireball. Dot, dot, dot. Natsuki reads my poem. She keeps glancing at me, then back at the poem. But now she must have read it more than once. Aren't you supposed to be bad at this? Is that a compliment? N no, I mean, you know. Natsuki struggles to find the words she wants. I just expected a lot less after what you've showed me yesterday. She's so sweet. That's all. Well, I guess I just got lucky with this one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You just got lucky, you know? Don't get used to it. You won't always manage to write poems this cute, I mean. I mean, well written. No, I mean... <laughs> ah, so that's how it is. My poem is cute. No, what do you... Why are you smiling? It's not like I like cute things. 
Natsuki shoves my poem back towards me. Huh. Reading it again, I decided that it's not so great after all. Blech. It's too cute and doki doki. What the fuck is doki doki? It would only impress, you know, girls who like those kinds of things. Hey, 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 hey. Guys can like those types of things too, girl. That's why I wrote a cute poem. Don't assume my fucking nature. She's hurting my feelings. She's hurting my feelings. <laughs> For some reason, Natsuki is incredibly easy to see through. Well, anyway, you're gonna read mine now, right? Judging by your taste, you'll probably like it a lot. <laughs> you'll probably learn something too. Don't forget who the real pro is. Wow, she is just a little piece of work. Amy likes spiders. You know what I learned? You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggling, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I hear her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. <laughs> and I'm gonna tell everyone. <laughs> Wow, that was something. I mean, it was cute. It was a fun poem. I liked it. Not bad, right? That was fucking weird, but I liked it. It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you don't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies and it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like anybody, anyone who agree, and, uh, uh, can't read, like anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course, it's about how everyone thinks my, that doesn't matter, it can't be about, it can be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or a guilty pleasure, something that you're afraid if people found out they'd make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anybody and it makes them happy? Well put, Natsuki. You're growing on me. You're growing on me, you little shit. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Well, you're definitely right. At least I can relate to that. And I'm sure a lot of other people can too. It's what I do best, after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like, conveying emotions is important. But I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm gonna write a good one for tomorrow, too, so look forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. Who should I show my poem to next? Let's go with Yori. Hi, Yori. Ah, oh, it's my turn. Let's see how it compares to yesterday's. Hmm, I see. It's a bit different. I respect you for trying different things, Wolfcore. Were you inspired by Natsuki's poem? Or Sayori's, perhaps? Well, I guess you could say that. I thought so. I'm happy for you. You don't need to find inspiration in my poems. Don't, don't beat yourself up, girl. I liked your poem. I write them for myself, not for anyone else. So I don't really need for people to like them or anything. Yuri! Eh... I'm sorry for being blunt, but you're overthinking this a little. Just because our styles are different doesn't mean I dislike your poems. In fact, if I tried to do something in your style, I would probably just do a terrible job. I... I see. I'm sorry. My stupid mind, it likes to do that sometimes. Anyway, you don't need to be afraid to be a little more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings and write down the things you see and hear. That's one way to truly enable your reader to see into your mind. It's a very intimate experience. I see. That's... God, this game is actually full of, like, really good writing advice. Props. Props to whoever made this. That's a 
that's a certain, certainly interesting technique. That's a weird way to word that. That's a certainly interesting technique. Okay, thanks for sharing. I have, um, well, an example of that if you'd like to read it. Of course. Is this the poem you wrote for today? Yuri nods and timidly hands me her poem. The raccoon! The raccoon! Rocket the raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as a unordin unordinary human. Strange tendencies as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences, well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoons in urge. Okay, I'm following. The moon in the moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off of my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited, or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satis satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic Pav Pavlovian conditioning. Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread, and I feel myself again. Whew, this girl is deep. She's got some deep waters, man. But hey, good, good poem. It really told a story. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style, using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if it takes it at if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. Hmm. It's those sorts of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Huh, that's funny. Didn't Natsuki also write something about that? About someone being ridiculed for a strange interest? Eh? She, she did. Yeah. She was talking about how it doesn't matter when you're into what you're into as long as you're not hurting anybody. She, she's right. Ah, I mean, does she really feel that way? Yeah, sounds like you two have that in common. That's, well, that's interesting. To me, she seemed like the kind of person who would make fun of my hobbies. But I suppose that's my fault for judging, isn't it? Ah, uh, please don't tell her I said that. <laughs> don't worry, I have no reason to. Okay, well that's... Well, thank you for sharing it with me. After all, if I didn't learn to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you got, you're got. you a good listener. Who should I show my poem to next? Well, it's a difficult choice, but I think we're going to go with Monica. Hi, Monica. Hi again, Wolfgore. How's the writing going? All right, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. Uh, da, da, da. All right, it's pretty good. It makes me think of Sayori, like the other one that you wrote. You two are like the dynamic duo. <laughs> That's kind of exaggerating it. <laughs> yeah, probably. But you do spend a lot of time with her even in this club, don't you? Then again, I don't blame you for being a little shy. I'm, I'm not shy, it's just, <laughs> I'm just teasing. I know it takes a bit of time to make friends with everyone, but Yuri and Natsuki are super interesting people, so don't be afraid to give them their share of time. And you can talk to me every now and then too. I'm not like unapproachable or anything, am I? Uh, no, it's nothing like that. I'm just still getting used to being here, that's all. Yeah, 
I'm sorry if I was putting pressure on you or something. I really don't mean it like that. N no, don't worry. I get what you're saying. Well, all right. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. All right, let's take a look. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sign cuisine. Cuisine? Tangent? What? Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. Load me. What? Okay. Okay, I did not I did not follow this one. Did not follow it. Hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just kind of thing I never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I write the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as physical expression or feeling, or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. <laughs> you never know when you might change your mind, or when something unexpected may happen. Saved. Yeah, okay. When something unexpected may happen. Wait, is that tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? <laughs> That that's that's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Okay, everyone, we're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everybody could come, sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Uh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last-minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Sayori has been working on posters, and I've been designing some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, uh, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? P um, Monica, yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is we're all going to let, and we're we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. It, yeah, nobody's nobody's going to do that. I'm sorry. So you're always putting it on all the posters in case anybody wants to prepare ahead of time. Hee <laughs> hee! Siori, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't you didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Eh, well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea, but I didn't sign up for this, you know? There is no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I, I agree with Natsuki. I could never, in my life, do something like that. Fun fact, when I was a kid going to private school, I had to get up and recite a poem in front of the entire school once a year, and it fucking sucked. It fucking sucked. I always hated it. It was the worst. And you had to memorize it. You couldn't read the poem. You had to memorize the damn thing. <sighs> Forest Lake! Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys? No, Sayori, I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anybody until just a couple days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So, I'm sorry. Da, da, da. But, I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. 
and the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah! It's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons that we're all in the club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Da-da-da. Da-da-da. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Uh, okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to go with get it over with. All right! Phew! Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Da, da, da. Yuri dejected, dejectedly glances around at everyone's, everyone else's expectant faces. Sigh. I, I guess I don't really have a choice. <laughs> That's everyone! You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. God, I hope that's not true. Oh gosh, you'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. N n no way! Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no, don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? <laughs> of course. Now, let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. <clears throat> Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, finally Monica finishes this. <gasps> finally, Monica finishes the recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That, that was so good, Monica. <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? Uh, I'll go next. What? Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It's called... It's, it's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happened when Yuri gets absorbed in her books. Her quivering words transform into the sharp syllab sh syllabus of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the, whirl the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri stamps back into reality and glances around her as if she bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save this situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward, and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm next then. So Yuri hops up out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Ah, <laughs> sorry, I giggled. <laughs> Sayori, it's a lot harder than I thought. How do you guys do it so easily? Uh, try not thinking of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your own head. 
it's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay then. Siuri begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone than I thought I knew... What? It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew, through and through. Sayori finishes, and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori! <laughs> even Wolfgore liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the, fo the poem fits you nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh? I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where the sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's, well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. <laughs> the next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay. Now, who's next? Natsuki? Hmm. Don't make me go before Wolfgore. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyways. Might as well let Wolfgore lower everybody's standards a little before I have to do it. <laughs> Natsuki? It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection to, of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyways. Sorry, I'm not really good. Not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. Alright then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes, makes her way to the podium. The poem is called... It's called... Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting? <laughs> anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down, as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes, and everybody applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You'd better not make me do that again. Ah, oh, well, do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people, but when it's just my friends... Oh, we're her friends. It's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everybody for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what's like, what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough... Oh, no! We missed it. I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez. I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine, too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. And yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club and oppressing Monica, then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep. Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? 
It's okay, Wolfgore, you don't have to say it. Whatever, let's go already. <laughs> I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Sorry, I was spacing out. Uh, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... I, I mean, Sayori fumbles with her words. So, let's just say that one day, Yuri asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> uh, I would walk home with you, Sayori, because cause I like you. <laughs> Sayori, you really think I would ditch you for Yuri? Eh? But, but, she's so beautiful and smart. Jeez, I already see her in the club every day. Besides, you always seem to really like going home together. I wouldn't just ruin that for you. You're so silly, Wolfgore. You think about me too much sometimes. Yuri would deserve it if she wanted it, so... Sayori, I've been... I've already made up my mind. I really can't figure you out sometimes. Sorry. Besides, what's the point in speculating something that's never going to happen? Hmm. The conversation trails off. It's kind of a weird thing for Sayori to care so much about, but I want to respect her and keep her happy too. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time. Well... That is going to be where we're going to call episode 5 for today, guys. I really hope you enjoyed. Make sure to smash that like button if you enjoyed the episode. Subscribe if you're new here. Leave me comments about who your favorite waifu is. Um, I'm leaning towards Sayori. Sayori, right? Yeah, Sayori. Sayori. Natsuki super cute, too. And Monica. Uh, Yuri, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if I'm feeling Yuri super much. I mean, I like her, but more like as a friend, you know? But uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. And uh, love your faces, beard heart, and uh, I'll see you back here with more Doki Doki next time. Bye! Mm -hmm.